All right, all right, Rad Nation. Today we're talking about computed radiography. It's actually a remake of a video that we made before. There was what I thought to be a bunch of cool little sound effects in that one, but you guys spoke loud and clear in the comments. So this is a remake without the sound effects. Starting first with the image acquisition, you as a technologist are gonna be setting the parameters, the technical factors that are most important for your image acquisition. That is exactly the same as with film-based techniques. So you're setting on your x-ray system, you're setting the KVP, MA, the time, all of these really important factors, as well as your Bucky and your SID, those are all the same. And the fact that you have a cassette is also the same in computed radiography. First off, as a technologist, you're actually placing the cassette in there, then performing that acquisition with the technical factors that we just talked about. Then you're gonna take the cassette and you're going to digitize it. So as a technologist, you're taking the cassette to the digitizer. We're gonna talk through the details about what's happening inside the digitizer in just a minute. But at a high level, you're taking that latent image and you're reading out that latent image and converting it into a digital image. So just a matrix of numbers that is gonna make the picture, which is our X-ray image. And finally, from there, you can see the image and you can typically push it to packs once you know that it's a good image. And you also wanna make sure that you're clearing your cassette so that it's ready to be used again in your next acquisition. We wanna make it totally flat field such that there's no remnants of the previous acquisition. Computed radiography, I'm gonna go through in a couple steps. First off, I'm gonna draw just a little cube here. It's actually a flat sheet, which is our material. And the computed radiography material is what we call a photoluminescent phosphor. Photoluminescent phosphor, for instance, could be barium fluoride bromide. And the idea here is this is a special type of material such that we can have x-rays incident on that material. And then there can be some energy stored in the material. So that's why we call it a latent image because it's inside of the actual material, but we can't see it with our eyes, right? So it's sitting there, it's latent. On the photostimulated luminescent material, the latent image is actually gonna be proportional to the x-ray exposure, which is incident on that material. So there is a latent image there. And how do we free the latent image? There's actually some energy that's stored in the material. And in order to free it, we need to provide a little bit of a kick. Basically, we need to provide a little bit of a kick such that we can free that energy. And to provide a little bit of a kick, what we do is we actually shine a laser at the material. So once we shine a laser at the material, there is actually a separate light which is emitted. And then that separate light, we're going to measure and we're gonna use what's called a photo multiplier tube in order to measure the light. When we're measuring light, which isn't super strong, we wanna use a photo multiplier tube to actually amplify that light signal. How the readout works, if you look at the readout, it's actually the whole panel. I just drew one little kind of sample cube of it, but it's actually a whole panel here, which is being first irradiated to form that latent image. And when that latent image is formed there, we want to read that out or essentially free that energy, which is being stored in the material. So in order to do so, we'll take our laser and in order to scan our laser across the material, what we'll do is we have our laser and it's pointed at a mirror and then that mirror can be directed down into one row and then that row can be scanned. So by moving the mirror, we can scan across that whole row. Then after we've scanned across that whole row, we can have the whole assembly move down because it's on rollers. So we can have the whole assembly move down and then the next row is read out and the next row and so on. And that way we're gonna fill up our whole image matrix one line at a time. That laser is going to free the light. That light is gonna go through a light guide 
after it goes through a light guide, it's gonna go through a photomultiplier tube. The signal is going to be amplified and it's still what's called an analog signal there. And then it's going to be digitized in a circuit we call an analog to digital converter. And in that analog to digital converter, we're essentially converting to a number. So we start out with a latent image, which was proportional to the exposure the panel saw. And then what we got out was that number. And that's how we build up a digital image directly using computed radiography. From the readout, you can see it's actually a very interesting technology that allows us to replace film because now we can read out and we can get a digital image directly rather than having the film where we had to take the film, we had to use chemicals in order to get an image. And even once we get the image, we still have a film-based image and that can't be sent to PAX directly. Some additional step would have to be taken in order to digitize that image. So it's much more efficient in comparison with film-based processing and computed radiography actually was the introduction in x-ray imaging to digital imaging. Later on, the DR came along and we have another video on DR and the difference between the types of DR, but computed radiography, actually, we believe that the name computed radiography is rather a misnomer and that computed radiography also came out a little bit after computed tomography was becoming popular. So some marketing geniuses decide to use the name computed radiography, and now we're stuck with it. There's actually no computing going on. So it really should be called something like stored radiography, because when new people come to the field, such as when I came to the field, I was like trying to figure out what kind of computing is going on. I know about computed tomography, where you're taking the actual views and you're trying to put those together to make an image, that's computed. Here, it's actually stored radiography that we're then reading out. There are computers involved, but there's computers involved in ultrasound images, and they're not trying to sell them using fancy names like CU or computed ultrasound. We have CR down, congratulations. It's time to move on to DR and DR is digital radiography. See our video on digital radiography right over here. That's gonna help you understand direct and indirect conversion as it's used to make our images in X-ray imaging.